Look at my dog. Thank you to Fiverr for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Fiverr is the largest marketplace for digital services, and Fiverr understands the importance of supporting Black-owned businesses and creators all the time, like me. <laughs> but especially in August, which is Black Business Month. And I have used Fiverr before, and I'm currently doing a secret project with them now. <laughs> you can choose from thousands of their talented professionals and find what you need to make your project happen. You can grow your business with Fiverr. You can create branding with Fiverr. And like me, you can create custom animations with Fiverr. The wonderful professional I've worked with before and I'm currently working for is G4 Streamer. So professional, so prompt, so friendly, and so flexible. Very clear communicator. I love working with G4 Streamer. So the problem I had was I wanted to have a custom animation for the like button and a subscribe button that looks like me and is on brand with Star Puppy. So I gave all of my notes and what I expected and wanted out of an animation. G4 Streamer delivered quickly, promptly, friendlily. <laughs> and in super high quality. In fact, I didn't know this, but I'm actually on the landing page for G4 Streamer. Hooray! Fiverr really opened my eyes to seeing how much better the end product will be when you just leave it to a friendly and very excellent professional like G4 Streamer. I love how cute the cartoon is. I love the style of the cartoon. I love the animation. I love the sound design. Like they knocked it out of the park. Let's be real. And I'm sure the people in the community tab know that I have a new channel called Nerd Puppy and G4 Streamer and I are teaming up again to make a new set of animations that will be featured on that channel. And if you'd like to see those new animations fresh off the presses, make sure you subscribe to Nerd Puppy and make sure that you head to my link in the description box to see all the services available to you and use my code for 10% off. Thank you so much to Fiverr again for sponsoring this portion of the video, and let's get back into it. Thanks so much, guys, and check out my link to Fiverr in the description box. I love them, and I've been using these animations for like, what, years? Check them out. Well, 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 look who's making a comeback. <laughs> well, 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 <laughs> okay, here she is. I kept those passion twists in for like three months. Then I took Fluff Nugget down like last week. And I just keep not doing anything to my hair. I washed it, had to detangle it. There's a lot of um, nodding at the bases of all the passion twists. I wonder why. <laughs> and of course, I had missed like 12 consecutive wash days. Y'all, I'm just really out here wiling with my hair. <laughs> I'll be honest, I got really hooked on phonics. No, um, hooked on the low maintenance of passion twists. And after, you know, this, wait, this gal showed up, it was a lot easier to just not deal with my hair and just spray it with some aloe vera mist and occasionally scrunch some leave-in conditioner into the place where my actual hair was and then just like not have hair. <laughs> I lost like a hairball that was like this big just from like detangling and getting all of the shed hair out and I'm sure there was some breakage as well because I, I haven't deep conditioned in like 12 weeks minimum. I actually don't know how long it's been. I'm gonna insert some footages of how my hair is doing uh, in terms of like the bald patch up top and I recently um, blew my hair out but I live in Atlanta let's go and um, I blew my hair out it's about this long still so didn't really lose any inches, but I didn't really gain that many for having my uh, hair and passion twist for so long. So I'm like, I'll take a break even. I'll take that. My ends still look really good. My hair has a really nice shape still. So like, honestly, it felt like, it felt like me and Fluff Nugget, we were on a break. I just needed my time and my space. So my wash day was actually quite interesting. I hadn't had like a full out wash day in so long. It felt kind of like alien. 
Um, I ended up using my regular 4C only deep conditioner. I love that stuff. Um, I did some additives um, of like omla powder and I want to say hibiscus powder. I wish I had done a little less of that. I also put some aloe vera juice in there. Um, honestly, I feel like I could have just done the 4C only and left it at that, but I was kind of trying to make up for lost time. <laughs> I felt like I was showing up to Fluff Nugget's window with like a boombox full of deep conditioner being like, baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> then on to the washing process, I lost about this muchish hair, which was not bad at all. Um, I did a really good thorough detangling uh, before I ended up washing my hair. And then um, I blew it out after I detangled some more in the, um, in the shower uh, after having deep conditioned. And uh, when I was blowing it out, here we go. I lost only this much. So altogether, however long it's been, I've lost, uh, I've lost about like this much. I was about to say fur. Well said. Uh, in that process. So I don't know if that's good or bad. And the entire time I was like blowing out my hair, I was like, um, I was kind of, <laughs> I was kind of shaking a little bit. Like if I go in this bathroom after I blow out my hair, cause I don't, I don't have a mirror right here and I've lost half of my head of hair. I'm shaving my head. <laughs> I'm never gonna do that, my head's too small. I still have hairs on my head. Uh, that is very disconcerting. It literally looks like someone like poof on my head. <laughs> it's literally like I'm, I've lost an entire section because look at this. See this perimeter? This it feels like all of this is where all that hair fell out. But fortunately, I don't think any more fell out. I can't actually see, um, but it doesn't feel any different from when um, my passion twists were in. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm feeling real. I feel a type of way and it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what type of way it is. Um, I guess I've just gotten to a point in my hair journey where, and especially with the hair fall I've experienced in the past, I'm just like, I'm not nearly as upset as I have been in the past. I know my hair will grow and I'll just keep you know, trimming it up until it catches up because it caught up before, it'll catch up again. And I'm just like, I don't know, I'm kind of numb to it. Let me get my pick. I've become so numb, I can't pick you there. I don't really want to wear my natural hair these days, I've noticed. I just want to wake up, have the same amount of hair that I do when I wake up to when I go to sleep. I love just slapping on a scarf and spraying it down with some stuff. And then that's like it. It's been very refreshing and I really needed it. And then also, um, I do live in Atlanta and it has been, I feel like a fried egg. Um, it's just been unbearably hot here. And even when I did all of that, I did my entire wash day, and to literally have like, you know, big fluffy fluff nugget and then go into like uh, running some errands, literally, I'm not, I am not holding you on this. I think it was record. <laughs> I think it was a world record. Um, my hair went from Zs. Oh, it is a little longer than it used to be. Look at that. Um, but it went from like this to shorter than this in, I want to say, like five, four minutes. And I already knew it was coming and I knew I was gonna put the passion twist back in. So I felt that it's that same numb feeling. Uh, and I was just like, 
Okay. <laughs> I do feel a little sad um, sometimes uh, because before that big faux pas I did to my own hair, um, I felt like my hair was in the best shape it has ever been. Uh, I had medium porosity. Um, my density was like the most of my entire life, I'm pretty sure. And um, the length was coming in. It, it didn't shrink as quickly as it used to, like very malleable, very soft, like a super deep, dark black color. And I just feel like I messed that up for myself. Like, and I had the best of intentions. It was during a month long challenge video I was filming for here. Uh, it's on my Patreon. I, I don't want to upload it on here. You'll read the description on the Patreon, you'll see why. But um, yeah, it was like good intentions. And then I just kind of like, I don't want to say ruined my hair, but I certainly, um, I certainly stumped my progress and to be honest with you, and I'm, I don't think it's very subtle on this channel, um, but that really affected my drive to upload hair content on here because I was just like really disappointed in that setback. And it also was like so deeply frustrating. Um, like really, I've worked so hard on this head of hair of mine and like it was flourishing. I just like, it's so sad that like, look, come on. <sighs> that is so annoying. And I kind of just don't want to deal with it until I can do something fully. So I feel like I've not only had like a, a setback in terms of length and density and like cohesion, of length around my head of hair, I feel like I've also suffered an emotional setback. Hair, it's, for me, it has never just been hair, obviously. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I feel really disheartened. And when my hair is like, like I'm having a bad hair day, uh, which I haven't had the opportunity to have in several months, but like when I'm having a bad hair day, I don't even feel sad. I just feel numb. Hmm. So that's worse than sad, honey. Hey. Um, <laughs> she can sense my woe. Way to support me, kid. Thank you. But yeah. Uh, so even now, all these months later, from the initial, uh, initial, from the initial um, hair fall, I'm still kind of upset with myself that. I lost all that progress and I literally, I didn't know. I wouldn't have done that if I had known. And yeah, it was like genuinely very exciting of a process. It was going really well, but I just, I think I took my hair for granted uh, because it had been so healthy for so long. I just didn't take the risk seriously enough and I I do regret that and uh, that's kind of why I've been a lot less active on here um, and also um, this two channels business wow <laughs> well I already mentioned it before but I have a new channel called nerd puppy and I am so proud of it um, I have my first video up and it's honestly it's probably one of my best videos I've ever made <laughs> The production quality is out of this world, I'll tell you that. And my team has just been incredible, um, especially you, you know who you are, um, in just implementing all this and like all the ideation. And I feel very passionate towards that channel and what I'm doing over there. Um, not only because I've wanted to like launch a nerdy channel for so long, but also I just don't wanna mess with my hair right now. <laughs> like, what am I to do? Cause look, I don't think you would think that anything happened to me. <laughs> but uh, I know, and it makes me a little self-conscious. It makes me a little self-conscious. Um, 
maybe I should do wash and goes, but I don't want to put like a bunch of stress on my hair to like keep it stretched out. Um, and if I don't stretch it out at night, it'll probably get really tangled. Then I'll lose a bunch of hair. So, mm, uh, I don't really feel like doing braid outs every day um, because I'm spoiled from having passion twists first and foremost. Um, and also it's one million degrees outside and it's so humid. Like this hair will go from like here to like, I'm not kidding you right here. And like I said before, I feel like I've, I've suffered and I'm still suffering from an emotional setback because y'all know I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't care about length for quite some time there. And now that this has happened and is still growing out, suddenly I care about shrinkage again. And I'm like, what's that about? So let's talk about it. So when I first started my um, natural hair journey, um, I was completely obsessed with length. And that was taken away from me from Man, that is an old, old video. I'm not going to remember to link it. So I'll just give you the highlights. <laughs> I wanted to have like a mini chop uh, to get rid of like, you know, the beginnings of my journey. I had a texturizer at that time and I was rocking that thing. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was rocking that thing. Riding on my bike on campus with a mohawk and a texturizer. I stole so many hearts. <laughs> The amount of people who told me they had a crush on me in undergrad is astounding and I was like why didn't you talk to me? <laughs> so um, I ended up going to a new um, hairstylist because and I know that's like your thinking red flag but actually my hairstylist at that time was uh, damaging the crap out of my hair and that's why it looked like it looked like overcooked spinach. So <laughs> I went to a new place and uh, that lady jacked me up real good and basically buzzed my hair off and then gave me a male lineup. I literally had the same haircut as my dad and it was also a really expensive haircut. Like to this day, I think that's the most I've ever paid for a haircut. I think it was something like 150 or something to get messed up. I didn't have my big girl voice yet. It's okay. That's, it's okay. We grow, we grow. We learn, we grow. Because of that, I felt very, very, very attached to length because I got, I got my head shaved without knowing I was getting my head shaved in a male lineup. So I felt very, I felt very, what's the difference? What, what's the opposite of emasculated? Masculated, emasculated, instead of I, eh? Latin, emasculated masculinized i don't know but um that hurt my feelings <laughs> so uh, i think that's when my kind of relationship with length and having a big fluffy look at me i'm like uh diana ross like you know but to me that's uh when i feel in terms of hair that's when i feel the most feminine and I think that matches me the best, like a giant fluffy afro. Um, I call it like the black cloud on my head I've always deserved. And ever since then, even though I had the most styling mohawk, again, I went from mohawk to a unintentional buzz cut to a mohawk again. Mohawks look good on me, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, <laughs> good news and bad news. Um, mohawks still suit my face, so that's good. Uh, and bad good news? My hair is still too long to do a proper this kind of mohawk. Look at that. That's weird. Anyway, what was I talking about? <laughs> it does feel very refreshing just to sit down and talk though. That's like the best. And what do y'all think of these? I like this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> so yeah, snuck right back into the mohawk. And um, from then on, I was kind of obsessing. Like I really wanted like the long, fluffy, like big hair. And in order for it to be big, it has to be long. But I was more like volume. So yeah, I think that's when that started. I started to kind of slowly let go of that because I, um, 
I realized that I like like spiral curls on me and I started to really accept and not only accept but really come to truly love the texture of my hair which I think was the root of my insecurity more so than the length um mm -hmm. because you if you know you know back then and that's all I have to say about that <laughs> I think what gave me security was not only learning to love the texture of my hair, it's literally like a nebula, it's like, it's like a thousand, more than a thousand, like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, thousands of um, like perfect coils and I think that's really cool. But also, I guess subconsciously, I also started to value the the uniformity of my hair and the density of my hair. Um, not to say, like, again, this is not a small amount of hair. Like, I've come a very far way. But um, I guess I actually subconsciously found comfort in the other aspects of my hair that actually fit in to the natural hair beauty standards and black beauty standards in general. We love a thick head of hair in the community. So to lose like the crown of my hair again, while I took it well, I suppose it actually, it affected me more than I thought. And fortunately, um, a great opportunity came by with Macy's. If you haven't seen those videos, I think they go hard. Um, check them out. <laughs> but um, that was a lot about rebuilding my confidence outside of my hair, which was wonderful. And that's when I put my hair away to not even be dealt with, um, which I think was the right move still. And I don't know, I suppose I'm trying to remember or trying to pinpoint maybe when I lost, when, when I lost, I don't know, like, what is it that I lost? Maybe I didn't lose anything. Maybe I came to a realization. Hold on, I'm, I'm working through this. This is live. This is therapy dollars at work, live. <laughs> You know, I do, I do have a strong reaction to going backwards. I don't like feeling like I'm not pushing forward in my life. I, I despise a setback. And I think that is my overachiever roots, uh, <laughs> roots uh, coming through. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a, just a, a big factor. Yeah, I guess I'm just more self-conscious about this than I really gave myself credit for. And I'm just kind of working through it and it's really affecting um, my uploading schedule. I don't want to take my hair out. I don't want to mess with her right now because I don't know how I feel. And doing your hair when you have anything in your feelings other than joy <laughs> is a bad idea. But where I am with Fluff Nugget right now is that um, she soaked in a crazy amount of moisture, was like super de duper, like decadent soft like she used to be. But right now she feels a bit dry. So I'm, uh, I'm just kind of recalibrating my hair care system right now. And I'm wondering, am I gonna put her back in the passion twists and like give us both a break, maybe do like a growth journey again. I can document this chapter of change for me. Uh, I'd like to do more just sit down and talk videos. Mm, maybe I can do like some kind of deep dive here that's a little more geared towards maybe hair, skincare, blackness, dogs. <laughs> Editing Danielle here. Inspiration has struck. What do you think of this? You guys would send in stories, right? Like, um, crazy stories, incredible stories, stories of triumph and niceness, and I would voice act them. Then we send all of those lines to an animator or several animators on Fiverr and we bring them to life as a team. What do you think? And of course, speaking of Fiverr, thank you so much again to Fiverr for sponsoring today's video.
And you guys go to fiverr.co backslash starpuppy to see how your business can be supported today. And make sure you use my discount code for 10% off. And happy Black Business Month. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.